there are a number of good reasons to go after a guy by the name of Joseph jo Joseph Joseph Robinette Biden, or as I call him, Joseph Raisinette Biden. He hasn't fought for a uh, $15 minimum wage, at least at the national level. Uh, he did sign an executive order to get a $15 minimum wage to federal contractors and employees, which is good, but that's 400,000 workers, not millions and millions of workers. Okay. He hasn't fought for, he hasn't lifted a finger for public option, never mind Medicare for all, which he said he would veto. Um, there are many legitimate critiques to go around. But there's also a number of absolutely positively insane critiques that go around, particularly from right-wing commentators, right-wing politicians and actors. Um, they always find a way to go after Joe Biden for his most based actions. So in step Ben Shapiro, here we are in the year, year of our Lord 2023, a long time after Biden withdrew from Afghanistan. And what is Ben Shapiro outraged about? Biden withdrawing from Afghanistan. So in other words, he takes his best thing and he turns it into a negative. But I want you to pay close attention to his argument here because he packs this full of really it's just emotion. It's like emotional manipulation. And it's not actually like a, a, a factual, solid argument. So let's listen and we'll break it down as we go. So yesterday in Escondido, California, the families, 13 service members who were murdered in a terrorist attack at Kabul Airport in 2021 held a press conference along with the senior member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Congressman Daryl Issa from Orange County. Well, they, uh, they appeared at Escondido City Hall and they called on the Biden administration to give them some answers and inform the public as to how their loved ones actually died in this terrorist blast. This is still the single most egregious act I've ever seen a president undertake. The single most egregious act I've ever seen a president undertake. He's talking about the withdrawal from Afghanistan. Disgusting pullout from Afghanistan without any plan whatsoever, the complete collapse of Afghanistan to the Taliban. So it's basically the worst action you've ever seen the U.S. government take to pull out of a war. Fascinating. You know, if I were to bring up the worst action the U.S. government committed, what would be on that list? Oh, I don't know. Slavery? The Trail of Tears, Jim Crow, the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which killed hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians, including babies, women, and children, the illegal and offensive war in Iraq, torture that was ordered to cover it up. On the list of things that are the most egregious done by the U.S. government, you have the withdrawal from Afghanistan at the top, a war which we were in for over 20 years and probably shouldn't have even been there for a single year. Because the whole idea was, bro, we got to get Osama bin Laden. He attacked us on 9-11. Osama bin Laden was killed in, what was it, 2009? And we were still hanging out in Afghanistan. Millions of people left behind. The hundreds to thousands of Americans were left behind in enemy hands. Okay, so first of all, those numbers are colossally overstated. Second of all, he said millions of people left behind. What are you talking about? The, the Afghans who helped the U.S. government throughout the course of the war? But Ben, if Biden turned around and said, let's let all of them in, you would immediately turn around and say, oh, how dare you? Open borders. Crazy. You're bringing in terrorists. So in other words, he can't win. Damned if he does, damned if he doesn't. <laughs> this is so dishonest. To get out, the translators were left to be murdered. The people falling from wheel wells. American soldiers being blown up at the airport because proper security was not actually guaranteed. It was feckless. It was ridiculous. And Joe Biden has never paid the political price for it. Okay, first of all, he did pay a political price for it. The media hammered and hammered and hammered and hammered and hammered. And he dropped in the polls tremendously. And it was a brave thing he did because he also turned around and said, hey guys, suck my nuts. I'm following through with this. Again, it was the most base, dark branded moment we've ever seen. But look, let's go a step further here. Ben, you do know the withdrawal from Vietnam was a disaster too, right? It was a historic boondoggle and a disaster. But now everybody looks back at it and goes, yeah, we shouldn't have been there and pulling out was the right thing to do. And to get angry about the way in which we pulled out as opposed to the war itself where we were using napalm and Agent Orange on little innocent babies, that shows how warped your moral compass is, Ben. Approval rating dumped into the 40s at that point. It has never quite recovered, but he has never played a real political price for it simply because in 2022, the election became all about various Senate candidates who were hand chosen by his political opponents. What, did, what price do you want him to pay? I hope you know that Marjorie Taylor Greene tried to impeach him over the withdrawal from Afghanistan, which by the way, I'm your Huckleberry. Be my guest. Go ahead. You want to try to impeach him over the most base thing he did under, under what authority? He's the commander in chief. He can pull out whenever the fuck he wants to pull out. But what do you want? What what sort of, uh, you know, punishment or consequences do you want Biden to face over the most base thing he did? The worst thing he did in the context of the withdrawal was do a retaliatory drone strike, which ended up killing civilians. Notice he's not bringing up that. Because when we kill civilians, that's it's come on, it's complicated. It's nuanced. We were trying to do what's right. Our intentions were good. The story of Joe Biden's presidency is not about the economy. 
It is not even about Hunter Biden. The real story of Joe Biden's presidency is encapsulated in the arrogance, the egotism, the disgusting self-involvement. That's your description of Biden and not Trump? That's your... That I've never heard a more accurate description of Donald Trump presiding over the greatest foreign policy disaster of my lifetime. And then just blithely <laughs> the greatest foreign policy disaster. Oh, my God. Really? The illegal and offensive invasion of Iraq, where we killed hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians and tortured people and created a vacuum in the Middle East, which then ISIS came into. That wasn't a bigger problem. That was, How about the attempted reconstruction of Iraq and Afghanistan, which saw us waste t -t 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 trillions of dollars? That's not worse than the withdrawal from Afghanistan? Oh my God, I can't. Look, it's hard for me to say this is anything but dishonest. I don't like to, uh, you know, I don't like to misinterpret people. I don't like to uh, assume bad intent or bad faith. But how can you make this argument in the face of a tremendous amount of evidence that the real scandals here were the was the war itself? That was the real scandal. Remember the Afghanistan papers? It came out, it was in the news for like a day because our media sucks, but it detailed all the insane extreme ways that there was waste and profit and abuse. And our own generals were like, I don't know what the hell we're doing there and war profiteering and all these things. And he has nothing to say about any of that. He's just mad we stopped it. It really is disgusting. And the way that this person who was perceived as warm and generous and fuzzy and cuddly, the guy who nuzzles small children for no reason that anyone can comprehend, the fact that this person was so cold and calculating, not just about the, the running away from a 20-year commitment and the sacrifice of a country to the Taliban. The running away from a 20-year commitment was the problem. Well, hold on now. Allow me to use an argument that many paleoconservatives make these days. Why are we wasting trillions of dollars in Afghanistan when our infrastructure here is crumbling? We have 500 or 600,000 homeless people. When we have 70% of Americans living paycheck to paycheck. But that he really did not care what happened to the people who got left behind, including American soldiers. Ben Shapiro clearly didn't care about all of the innocent victims of our illegal and offensive invasions. In fact, he wrote an article. Now, to be fair, he has since come out and said this was like one of my dumbest takes. I'm um, against this take that I had now. But he he came out with an article that was like, "What's there's no problem with collateral damage. Like, OK, so some innocent people die. What are you going to do? He wrote an article about that. Like, I'm not concerned about civilian deaths of our enemies. Why would I be concerned about that? Ben, that's the egregious thing. Again, to be fair, he's like basically retracted that and said I was wrong and all that. So, okay, okay. But it clearly, 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 we, we see the same thought process still going on in your mind. And that was certainly evident from the testimony of the Gold Star family members and wounded soldiers who actually were at this press conference yesterday. And the media did not pay this anywhere sort of attention. They would have if the president of the United States was Donald J. Trump. Because, again... It underscores what kind of person Joe Biden is. Joe Biden is not a good person. Joe Biden is the kind of person who ignores a four-year-old grandchild for four years if he thinks it's politically beneficial for him to do so. Joe Biden is the kind of person whose entire career has lied about others. This part is true, by the way. Uh, Hunter had a kid out of wedlock, and they, she was just like basically kicked out of the family. They act like she didn't exist. And Biden just recently acknowledged her, but it's only because there was like a New York Times article that was like shaming him over it. So this part is true. That is definitely, definitely gross. But to be fair... Talking about issues of war and peace, it's way more serious than private life stuff. A, a man who was involved in a car crash with his wife, in which his wife and one of his children were killed. And he slandered that person as a drunk driver for like 30 years. That's the kind of person that Joe Biden is. Joe Biden is a person who cares first and foremost about himself. And that is perfectly obvious in the way that he treated these Gold Star family members. Remember, in 2015, 2016, when Donald Trump was running for president of the United States the first time, he got into a widely publicized spat with Kaiser Khan, who's a Gold Star family member who was actually a speaker at the Democratic National Convention talking about how much he disliked Donald Trump and all the rest and how Donald Trump was a racist and a xenophobe. He's not giving you the full context. So what happened is Kaiser Khan lost his son in one of our wars. And this is a Muslim American who fought for the United States of America. And, you know, basically they were like, this guy fought and bled for the United States of America. And Donald Trump is out there saying we need a total and complete shutdown of Muslims until we can figure out what the hell is going on. So in other words, disregarding and downplaying all of the sacrifices that Muslim Americans had for this country. And so, of course, this guy was going to be like, screw this guy. My son died for this country and your ass is up there slandering all Muslims. So he's not really giving you the full context. That was the reality of it. Trump went at him and this became a major issue of contention in the 2016 election campaign. Joe Biden is currently, he's not a candidate. He's currently the president of the United States. He's the president of the United States when 13 American service members were murdered in Kabul. And the treatment of these Gold Star family members was egregious and disgusting, and the media don't care. They don't care. These Gold Star family members are of no consequence to them. No one knows their names. Uh, what about the hundreds of thousands of innocent Iraqis who were killed? 
What about the thousands of people in Afghanistan who were killed? What about the victims of our colossal drone war, which, by the way, was massively increased by Donald Trump by over 400 percent? What about them? By the way, Biden has greatly reduced that drone war. What about those people? Do they matter to you at all? Or do they only matter if they're American? Now, by the way, I actually care about the American soldiers' deaths, which is why I wouldn't have gone into these wars in the first place. No one gives them coverage. These are not people who you're going to see on the nightly news. You're not going to see interviews with wounded soldiers. Those wounded soldiers, you only get interviews with them if there's a, a, a peculiar belief that Donald Trump has done something really, really bad. You remember during the Trump presidency, supposedly he didn't pay proper homage at Normandy. He didn't go out onto the beach or something because it was raining. And this is widely reported by Jeffrey Goldberg at The Atlantic without any real support. And it turns out the story really had nothing to it. Where's Jeffrey Goldberg in The Atlantic on this? So let's get into some of the things that the Gold Star family members actively said at this California press conference yesterday, paying tribute to the victims of the Afghanistan terror attack that claimed the lives of 13 American service members. A couple, it was only a couple of years ago. Here's the mother of fallen Marine Colonel Hunter Lopez, who read the names of the dead U.S. service members in Afghanistan yesterday. I ask that our children are honored, those injured, and those that made it home from HKIA. that they be honored by speaking the truth. Staff Sergeant Taylor Hooper, Sergeant Nick G, Sergeant Johanny Pachardo, Staff Sergeant Ryan Naus. Okay, Joe Biden, he won't mention these people's names. He mentioned them a couple of years ago and that was it. He never heard of them again. What's so disgusting about this clip is that he's using the pain of U.S. soldiers' families after their own family members and children died. He's using that to make effectively a pro-war argument that the withdrawal from Afghanistan was the problem. No, Ben. This exact same clip you're using, the clip of all of the people who are shattered after they lost loved ones in Iraq and Afghanistan and elsewhere, the real takeaway is we never should have been there in the first place. You want to make an argument, hey, we should get a congressional approval to specifically and only go after Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda. There's definitely a debate to be had there, and that's a reasonable thing. Osama bin Laden did 9-11. Let's take out Osama bin Laden. Okay, great. Like I said, he was done in, what was it, 2009? Was it 9 10 Something like that. That's over a decade ago. What were we still doing in Afghanistan? What are we still doing in Iraq? And so that's what's so gross about this, is it is basically, it's emotional manipulation for pro-war virtue signaling. Because again, his argument is the problem is Biden pulled out. He's not doing this rant to go after George W. Bush, who got us into both those wars in the first place. He was a little George W. Bush sycophant. He likes Bush more than he likes Trump. That's the problem. So look, you want to talk about these families? I'm more than happy to talk about these families. I would sit down one-on-one -on -one with them and look them in the eye and say, your country failed you. Your loved ones shouldn't have even been in any of these places. And we're going to make sure going forward, they don't get willy-nilly used as pawns and cannon fodder on a national stage for imperialism and neoconservatism. But Ben Shapiro is going to sit there and continue to preach that neoconservatism and imperialism and act like, oh, I care so much and I'm the good guy in this scenario. No, you're not, Ben. You're a pro-war stooge. Hey y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.